ان الحمد لله والصلاه والسلام على اشرف الانبياء وعلى اله واصحابه ومن والاه بعد ماي دير برادرز السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته اتس ا جريت بليجر تو بي هير اجين اند تو ميت اول اوف يو اند مي الله سبحانه وتعالى ميك ذس سيشن ا مينز اوف بينيفيت فور اول اوف اس اند جيف مي ذا ابيليتي تو سي ثينجز تو يو ذات ويل بي ا مينز اوف بينيفيت فور يو ان ذس وورلد اند ذا نيكست Somebody asked me this question yesterday about this particular lecture. They said, "Is it an Islamic lecture?" So I said to him that for a Muslim, how to win is impossible for it not to be an Islamic lecture, because this is one of the problems that we have done with the way we teach and learn. That we have fractured knowledge. We have separated knowledge. as religious knowledge as one uh, section and what we like to call secular education which is a misnomer in the first place because secular if you take the meaning of secular not the indian meaning of secular is all religions but the actual meaning of secular is which is godless there is no uh, interference of god in that matter which is called secular that's the actual meaning of secular so <clears throat> this is secular knowledge now that's a misnomer it's like saying halal pork because it's either pork or it is halal it can't be the two together it's a mutually exclusive uh, term so secular education either it is education or it is secular if if there is some so called knowledge which is devoid of uh, the presence and the uh, mention of the creator then it's not knowledge it's misguidance so you can't call it knowledge because knowledge is the opposite of misguidance so if it is secular if there is no god in it then there is no then it cannot be knowledge it's misguidance so you cannot have secular knowledge but we use these <coughs> we have got used to using terms without thinking about the meaning of that term so i don't call it secular knowledge i call it supportive knowledge so you have religious knowledge and then you have supportive knowledge which opens your eyes to the reality and truth of the religious language now what is the dalil for this why do i say that the dalil for this is in the quran itself allah subhanahu wa ta'ala jalla jalaluhu taught us the methodology of teaching and learning in the quran allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the famous ayat of surah al-ali imran a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim bismillahir rahmanir rahim inna fi khalqis samawati wal ardi wa ikhtilafil layli wan nahari la ayatin li ulil albab الذين يذكرون الله قياما وقعودا وعلى جنوبهم ويتفكرون ويتفكرون في خلق السماوات والارض ربنا ما خلقت هذا باطلا سبحانك سبحانك فقنا عذاب النار الله سبحانه وتعالى said verily in the khalq samawati wal ardi wa ikhtilaf al layl wal nahar allah subhanahu wa taala said verily and truly in the creation of the heavens and the earth and in the changing and alternation of the day and the night there are signs ayatil li ulil albab ayatil li ulil albab signs for people of intelligence signs for people who have understanding and then allah subhanahu wa taala described who are the people of intelligence allah did not say people of intelligence are the people who are the graduates of this jamia or that darul ulum allah did not say people of intelligence are the graduates of this university or that university allah subhanahu wa taala described who are the people of intelligence and please notice allah subhanahu wa taala described two qualities and he joined the two qualities what are the two qualities first quality alladhina yadhkuruna allah qiyaman wa quudan wa ala junubihim Who are those people? They are the ones who remember Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala standing, sitting, and lying down. This is the beauty of the Bayan of the Quran, where the most complex thoughts are expressed in the most simple language. So Allah is not saying they are people who remember Allah in their personal lives, in their public lives, in their businesses, in their offices, in their homes, in their schools, in their colleges. There's no need to say all that. 
they are people who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala standing, sitting and lying down. Because standing, sitting and lying down encompasses every condition of the human being. We can do one of three things. We can be standing, we can be sitting, we can be lying down. There's no fourth thing. So when you say standing, sitting and lying down, it means every single aspect of your life. And what is Allah saying? What is the first sign of people of intelligence? Those who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those who recognize their Rabb. Those who know who their Rabb is. And they remember him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not somebody they remember when they come into the masjid. Allah is not somebody they remember on Jumu'ah. Allah is not somebody they remember when they are standing in Salah. May Allah protect us. We don't even do that. Allah is not somebody we remember when you are doing some dhikr or something. Allah is someone that you remember cons constantly and consistently throughout every aspect of your life. First quality of people of intelligence and understanding. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used the preposition, he used the, the connector. Wow. Wa yatafakkarun. Now please understand, I mean many of you know Arabic, alhamdulillah. If, the, if I say the same thing, and I'm going to say it just to illustrate. If I say the same thing using aw, which is or, instead of wow, which is and, grammatically the sentence in Arabic is perfectly correct. Supposing I say, الَّذِينَ يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ قِيَامًا وَقُودًا وَعَلَىٰ جُنُوبِهِمْ أَوْ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ If I say that people of intelligence are those who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala standing, sitting and lying down or those who do research in the creation, the sentence in terms of Arabic grammar, in terms of the construction of the sentence in the Arabic language is perfectly correct. But is that the ayat of the Quran? The ayat of the Quran does not say awya tafakkarun. Ayat of the Quran says wa yatafakkarun. Wa yatafakkarun fi khalqi samawati wal ard. And those who then what do they do? In the state of remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala jalla jalaluhu, they do research in the creation of the heavens and the earth. Yesterday somebody sent me a video of a 3D video of a brain surgery where a person, the, the surgeon is inserting a platinum coils into an aneurysm. Now an aneurysm is not a religion, it's the only ism with, which is uh, not a religion. An aneurysm is something which I ask Allah to protect all of us from. Uh, it's basically a weakness in the, in the wall of the artery which produces like a balloon and if it bursts, you are history, but even if it doesn't burst, uh, it then presses on whatever nerve is there and because of that pressure, pressure it produces either tremendous pain or it produces, uh, it can uh, end up in a stroke and all kinds of things. Now, currently the, the cure for that is they do a bypass of the aneurysm. They, they put a, a, another tube which bypasses the aneurysm and they try to cut it off, which is a very complicated surgery, but they've invented a new surgery where they just fill that aneurysm up with platinum coils because platinum is an inert metal, so it doesn't, in, uh, doesn't uh, the body doesn't reject it. Uh, they fill it up with platinum coils so that then the blood flow uh, is constant and then whatever blood is inside the aneurysm, then it uh, clots and so it shrinks and the pressure on the nerve is released. Now, I am greatly into, into science and I, I absolutely love science. So this friend of mine sent me this, uh, this thing and I am thinking to myself, SubhanAllah, see the technology of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who created the brain which thought of this. You know, I love, to, I love manufacturing. So I always go anywhere, anywhere there is a uh, manufacturing plant, I go to see factories. And I, I don't go to see factories to see what's produced. I go to see factories to see the machinery. Because if you imagine the mind, the human mind, how is it that this human being, no matter how strong it is, how much weight can you lift? Even if you are a professional weightlifter and if you are built like Arnold Schwarzenegger, how much will you lift? 200 kilograms, 300 kilograms? That's peanuts. Any self-respecting uh, camel will lift that and more. But as a human being, what do we do? We build ships which are hundreds of thousands of tons. You know, what is the, what, what is the, the, the displacement of a, of, a, of a big oil tanker? What is the displacement of a big container ship? 200,000 tons, 500,000 tons? 
half a million tons of steel is floating on water. I'm sure all of you have traveled by now, everybody's traveled in an A380. And before that, I'm sure many people have traveled in a 747. Can you see, unfortunately, we have lost our sense of wonder. We just get into the plane, sit and relax and eat something and get out. Imagine, think about this. Here is thousands of tons of steel and it flies. How? What makes a plane fly? Not engines, not the thrust. The engine power of a freight locomotive, a freight engine is far more than the engine power of a plane. What is the engine power of a microlight? Fractional horsepower. But it flies. Try making a train fly. So what makes a plane fly? What makes a plane fly is not engine power. It is geometry. It is geometry. That is why you must study math. And you must not study math in the insane way that we study math. Don't even get me started on the school system. It, is, it stinks so high. But just one point I'm saying. A plane flies because of geometry. What do, what do I mean by that? It flies because of the lift that is created under the wing. When air travels over the top of the wing, which is like what is called a D section. The top of the wing is like that. So when air flows over the top of the wing, it creates a vacuum under the wing. And the plane flies. That vacuum is called lift. So thousands of tons of steel takes to the air because of geometry, not because of anything else. Who created this law? Who created this law of this geometry that makes the plane fly? How do you float thousands of tons of steel because of another law, which we know as the Archimedes principle? What is Archimedes principle? It is the principle of displacement. Who created the law? But you will never understand that unless you have studied in the methodology that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala jalla jalaluhu taught us in the Quran. Which is what comes first? Recognize your Rabb. Alladheena yadhkuroon Allah qiyaman wa qurudan wa ala junubihim. What is the meaning of zikr Allah? What is the meaning of zikr Allah? Qiyaman wa qurudan wa ala junubihim. It is the essence of taqwa. It is impossible for a person to be remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala jalla jalaluhu in a position of standing, sitting and lying down and still doing ghibah and still doing namima and still slandering people and still telling lies and still deceiving people and still eating haram and still smoking haram, smoking itself is haram but and doing all kinds of being a bad neighbor, being a bad family husband, being a bad wife. It is impossible for a person to be remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and simultaneously doing something which is the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala jalla jalaluhu. So if a person remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qiyaman wa qudan wa ala junubihim, automatically this person is a muttaqi. And when that muttaqi's eyes see the creation and they reflect on the creation once again the beauty of the bayan of the quran allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not name nanotechnology separately he did not name physics separately he did not name chemistry separately he said yatafakkaruna fi khalqi samawati wal ard call it what you want those are your names my rab jalla jalaluhu does not need your names Call it what you want, it is fikr fi, fi khalqi samawati wal ard. Whatever it is, whatever has been invented, whatever is to be invented till the day of judgment, is fikr fi khalqi samawati wal ard. How was this created, what can be done with it, and so on and so forth. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed us the connection. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us what is the automatic result of teaching and learning in this way. Alladheena yadhkuroona allaha qiyamahu wa qoodahu ala junubihim wa yatafakkaroon 
وَيَتَفَكَّرُونَ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ What is the result? رَبَّنَا مَا خَلَقْتَ هَذَا بَاتِلًا سُبْحَانَكَ Automatic result. When the person who has taqwa sees the creation, what does he say? Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Does he say this is an accident, somehow happened? Accidents break things, they don't make things. There's no somehow. Rabbana ma khalaqta hadha batilan subhanak. And then he remembers his own ending. Faqina adaban nar. Allahumma ajirna min al-nar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us all from the hellfire, inshaAllah. He remembers his own ending. Faqina adaban nar. So therefore, is this lecture an Islamic lecture? You decide. Because if it is a lecture for intelligent people, which all of you inshallah are, then there is not, it is not possible to do this as a lecture which is not Islamic. So I want to, I talked to you about laws of physics. And I therefore want to share this with you as the opening statement, which is that laws of winning and losing, they are like the laws of physics. They are universal and they give the same result every single time and the results depend on the choices not on who made the choices the law of physics doesn't change because you are a Muslim it doesn't change if you are a Hindu if you go up in a plane and at 20,000 feet if you jump which law of physics now has you in its grip what is it called the law of gravity. What is the law of gravity? That any particle which is in the gravitational field of the earth will be pulled towards the earth at what rate? Correct. Meters per second per second or 32 feet per second per second acceleration. Does this law change if you say Allah Akbar and jump? Does this law change if you say something else and jump? The law is universal. If you, no matter what you say with the law, if you jump and at some point in time, if you do not pull the ripcord of your parachute, then you will have a concrete experience when you meet the concrete. Nothing will change. Yes or no? Now imagine the situation. Imagine two people jump from the plane and they're both coming down at 9.8 meters per second per second, 32 feet per second per second, one of them tells the other one, pull your ripcord of the parachute. The man says, why? He said, because otherwise you will die. He says, I don't believe in gravity. There is no such thing as gravity. So what's the answer to that? The answer is wait for 10 seconds. That is the answer. So what is the answer to somebody who says there is no God? Wait for 10 seconds. <laughs> Simple as that. Why must I argue with you? Does the point I'm making is this. Does the fact that the person does not believe in gravity, will it change what gravity will do to him at the end of that journey? Your belief, and that's why I say belief, reality is not dependent on belief. Reality is reality. It is not dependent on belief. You can believe whatever you want. Qulil haqqum rabbikum faman sha'a fal yu'min wa man sha'a fal yakfur. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said very clearly, say to them, my Rabb is haqq. Your Rabb, qulil haqqum rabbikum. Your Rabb is haqq. You want to believe it? Most welcome. You don't want to believe it? Most welcome. Wa man sha'a fal yu'min wa man sha'a fal yakfur. Reality does not change because of belief. So now, stay with that situation. Here is this guy 
who says pull your parachute ripcord otherwise you will die the other one says i am not i do not believe in gravity so now what happens this one who believes in gravity he pulls the ripcord what is the first immediate effect when the parachute opens what happens to your speed of descent decreases right it decreases because now the parachute is holding you so now imagine the other fellow is thumbing his nose at the other man he says see you are stop man you are slow you are a square see me i'm fast we i'm zooming and you are hanging with that parachute yeah bolega ki nahi bolega he will say this yeah hamari zaban mein angutha dikhayega so what must the other parachute guy do cut the parachute no he knows koli lag to mera rab bikum and then what happens the inevitable will happen so please understand this very clearly the fact i know there are probably no atheists in this masjid but there are a lot of us who live like as if they are as if we are atheists may please forgive me for saying that when you are old and have a white beard you can get away with a lot we live as if we believe that there is no allah what is the what is the proof of that because we disobey allah subhanahu wa taala how can you disobey allah subhanahu wa taala when you know that he is watching you all the time alam ya alam bi anna allah yara does he not know that allah is watching the ayat of surah al iqra the asbab and nuzul of that are related to abu jahal we ask allah subhanahu wa taala not to combine us with abu jahal but the ayat of the quran is a lesson for all of mankind till the day of judgment and it is not restricted by the asbab and nuzul alam ya alam bi anna allah yara does he not know that allah is watching so if we are if we deliberately do something which is haram if we deliberately do something which we know dis- displeases allah subhanahu wa taala then what must one say about our belief that allah exists what must one say about our belief that allah can see who was samiul basir what must one say about about the fact that allah knows what is in our hearts who alimum bi zati sudur nobody else has to say anything about your or my belief we have to ask ourselves this question do i really believe that allah is watching me do i really believe that allah subhanahu wa taala who was samiul basir or am i lying to myself because if i really believe that allah subhanahu wa taala knows what's in my heart that allah subhanahu wa taala can see me and hear me real time then how come i am lying and cheating how come i am bribing how come I, how come i am doing something which is negative and which is harmful so therefore we have to be very clear in our mind with regard to the belief as i mentioned to you fundamental laws are fixed and they change for no man or woman fundamental laws always give the same result and the thing to understand about fundamental laws is you don't make it so you can't break it and to benefit from that fundamental law you have to pay the price you want to fly you have to build a plane the law is there the law that the movement of air over the d section of the wing produces lift this law is there but when will that law benefit you and me when you build a plane you don't actually have to build a plane yourself you can buy a ticket and go on a plane but point is somebody is making that making that investment and you are making that investment by buying a ticket and so you fly and that's why we say only those who follow them these laws can succeed So the first thing I submit to you my brothers and uh, if there are any sisters here is my formula for winning and my formula for winning is that winning is a combination of three things passion expertise and return if you are clear about these three things what are you passionate about are you an expert in the thing that you are passionate about and what is the return that you are getting from that particular uh, activity if these three things are clear then you will be successful 
if any of these is not clear then it will affect your success and these three things this model is based on the on a platform of integrity and like we have platforms in our computer programming if there's a fault with your platform no software will run correctly on that platform yes or no so you have to see is it an issue with the platform is it an issue with the os is it an issue with the operating system itself changing the software is not going to help you if the problem is with the operating system if the if the, if, if the platform itself is corrupted you have to change the operating system you got to change the the platform before you can put any load any software onto that and the platform the operating system of the muslim is integrity that is the meaning of tawhid that is the meaning of la ilaha illallah la sharika lahu lahu almulku wa lahu alhamd yuhyi wa yumit wa huwa hayyul ladhi la yamut bi yadihi alkhair innaka ala kulli shay'in qadir la ilaha illallah muhammadur rasulullah this is the platform on which the muslim runs this is the definition of integrity as far as islam is concerned now, when the person nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam the famous hadith he said to the sahaba the one who says la ilaha illallah muhammadur rasulullah with ikhlas will enter jannah may allah bless the sahaba ridwanullah alayhim ajmain tonight we have a lecture on the sahaba they asked questions and because of their questions we have our deen they asked him sallallahu alaihi wasallam ya rasulullah what is the ikhlas of the kalima because what did he say he said the one who says this kalima with ikhlas will enter jannah they said ya rasulullah what is the ikhlas of the kalima nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the ikhlas of the kalima is it will protect you and keep you away from haram it will protect you and keep you away from haram how can a muslim who said la ilaha illallah muhammadur rasulullah how can he lie because lying is haram the platform of integrity on which runs this model <clears throat> to understand very clearly that integrity is about yourself integrity is not about other people because this is the usual excuse we get why did you tell a lie why well, you know system is like that why did you give a bribe well without the bribe i cannot get my work done why did you do this this always exporting of blame it's always somebody else's fault why is it that muslims are in this situation oh because of what the americans are doing because of what cia is doing because of what zionists are doing because of what israel is doing my brothers and sisters wake up wake up our situation is because of what we are doing or not doing is it and nobody else is responsible people do what they have to do they are doing their work why is it i was telling my my friends here i teach <clears throat> i teach and train from 1994 onwards i have been teaching uh, leadership at uh, g corporate university at ama international uh, at uh, motorola at ibm at microsoft from 1994 onwards what year is this gregorian calendar 2016 do the sums how many years is that in all those years i have never ever no matter which country i i do these programs uh, across the world so multiple countries which means i have got multiple uh, people of multiple races and nationalities in those programs from 1994 till today no program has ever begun late not even one minute late not even one single minute late they are also human beings majority of them do not say la ilaha illallah is this what our kalima is supposed to do to us take away our competitive advantage make us people who cannot even keep to time husain was telling me the creed national creed of denmark is punctuality time is a number time is not open to tafsir time is not open to interpretation 9 o'clock does not mean something else in qatar something else in new york something else in singapore 9 o'clock is 9 o'clock whatever you were doing after 9 o'clock would have been done before 9 o'clock and believe me i'm not criticizing you i'm just this is the the the, the dar this is the pain in my heart because you are my people who must i take my pain to outsiders i 
I am getting old. According to the Hijri calendar, I am 63 at the end of this year. <clears throat> I do not know whether I will see you ever again. But if you take one message from me, take that message, which is integrity. Tawheed means integrity. Be true to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We all like to talk about dawa. We do dawa programs. This lecture, that lecture. Believe me, people are sick and tired of listening about Islam. I am probably the only so-called sheikh because I don't even consider myself to be a sheikh. I am the only so-called sheikh who spends 90% or more of his time teaching non-Muslims. So my experience of the other side of the world is probably more than any or all the shuyuk that you can imagine combined put together because they talk to you, our people, they talk to Muslims. I talk to non-Muslims and I can tell you people are sick and tired of listening about Islam. People want to see Islam. And like we say in America, they say put up or shut up. They say either show me Islam or take your lecture and go away. I'm not interested in your pamphlet. I'm not interested in your lecture. Rasulullah was like this. Sahaba was like this. I absolutely we agree. I don't want 1400 year old history. I want to see what you are. Because if you have no faith in your own Nabi, if you cannot even follow your own Nabi, you want me to follow? Does it make sense? Does it make sense? My brothers and sisters, it's time to wake up. Wallahi, it's time to wake up. Because one day these questions, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask us on the day of judgment. Did I send this Nabi for you to talk about him and not follow him? Or did I send this Nabi and say, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ For you. Allah did not say, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَهُمْ for them, it is the best example. You can do whatever you want. Did Allah say this? لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا فَهُمْ لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرَةِ وَذَكَرَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا For the one who looks forward to the meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala jalla jalaluhu. You look forward to which meeting? To a meeting where you fear punishment or to a meeting where you expect reward? Which one? Pleasant meeting. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make your last day the best day of your life. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make the day that you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the best day of your life inshallah. But we have to work for that my brothers and sisters. Integrity is about us. It's not about them. Whoever those them are. <coughs> then we come to the model which is passion. What is passion? Passion is not what you see in your sleep. Passion is that which does not let you sleep. Passion is that which makes you cry. I always say if you can't cry, you can't work. And it can be anything. You might be a brain surgeon and you're sitting and crying about that brain surgery. There's a friend of mine who's a Hindu doctor. He's a cancer specialist, oncologist. Sometimes he comes and sits and cries and weeps. And he says, what is the good of this knowledge? I can't cure anybody. People still die of cancer. He's very passionate about, the, about, his, about his medicine. People still die. Then we have to explain to him that hayat and mouth is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But he says, then why must I learn this thing? Passion. Ask yourself, whatever your profession, are you passionate in it? Because you will never do well in your profession unless you are passionate about it. In Islam, there is no Islamic, that's why I'm, I'm, I'm allergic to certain terminology. People say Islamization of knowledge, there is no such thing. Knowledge by definition is Islamic. 
So any profession is halal, any profession is jayz as long as it is not going against what the Sharia has prohibited. You don't have to ask the question, just simply ask, is this prohibited in the Sharia? If it is not prohibited, it is halal. So are you passionate about your IT programming? Are you passionate about your construction, uh, construction engineering? Are you passionate about playing cricket? Are you passionate about whatever it is? Because unless you are passionate, you will never excel in that work. And to me, the sign of passion is not even will you do that free? To me, the passion is will you pay to do that? So if you say I'm a teacher, I won't even ask you the question, will, are you passionate about teaching? Will you teach for free? No. Will you pay to teach? Because unless you will pay to teach, you're not passionate. It's incidental. You may not need to pay to teach. Somebody might pay you, that's fine. But left to yourself, are you going to say that I will not teach unless I'm given a fee today? May Allah protect us from this. Wallahi. Today we have Muslims who say I will not give a khutbah unless I get a fees. We have Muslims who will say I will not teach a class unless I get a fees. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. You want money to talk about the greatness of Allah? Huh? Huh? You want money? To talk about the greatness of Allah. Where is the passion? Where is the passion in Islam? And that's why there is no barakah in our da'wah. <coughs> Make it haram on yourself to take money for da'wah. Refuse it. If somebody forces it, Take it and give it away in charity. Do not put it into your pocket. Do not take it home. And don't give me the dalil of uh, the hadith where Rasulullah said teaching Quran is the best uh, to, to take uh, Mu'awidha, to take uh, some uh, reward for teaching Quran is the best Mu'awidha. Because in my understanding of the hadith, that hadith is the same like the man who came to Rasulullah and there was a woman came to Nabi Sallam and the woman said to him, I want to marry you, Ya Rasulullah, please marry me. He, Nabi Sallam said, I'm not in need of a wife. There was a man sitting there, he said, Ya Rasulullah, please marry me to this woman. I, I need a wife. Nabi Sallam asked her, are you willing to marry the man? He said, yes. So he asked the man, what uh, meher will you give? He said, I'm a poor man, I have nothing. If I had meher, if I had meher to give, I would have married somebody. I mean, I, I have no wife because I want no money. So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, teach her Quran, that is your maher. Do you use this as a dalil for maher for your, for your daughters and, and sisters' weddings? The hadith is sahih. Is, can you extract a hukam to say that this is dalil to say that it is, maher is, is okay, just teach, some, teach a few ayat of the Quran? There is a beautiful hadith. And that's why I said, read seerah. The problem with us is we do not read seerah. There is a beautiful hadith. This man comes to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and says, Ya Rasulullah, I made a mistake. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi what mistake? He said, I was fasting and suddenly I saw my wife, I had this great desire, so I had sex with her. Now what do I do? Rasulullah the kafar offered this, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi said, fast for two months continuously. The man said, Ya Rasulullah, one day's fast did this to me, two months. Eh? <laughs> so Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi said, Feed, <coughs> feed 60 people. Hmm? The man said, Ya Rasulullah, I am poor, I am miskin. Where do I have the money to feed 60? I, have not, I want nothing. So Rasulullah smiled and he said, okay, sit there. So the man sat. Then somebody came with a big basket of dates. And said, Ya Rasulullah, I want to give this to Sadaqah. Nabi Sallallahu said, where is that man? The man came. He said, take this dates and give it, feed 60 people. He said, Ya Rasulullah, I am the most miskin in Medina. So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam smiled and said, okay, take it, eat it. Now tell me, is this Dalil to say that the, there is no kafara for uh, breaking your fast? Is it Dalil to say that if I break my fast, then you must feed 60 people? 
or that you must give me the money to for, for me to eat for 60 days there are some hadith of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam which are sahih hadith we do not deny the hadith Alhamdulillah this is the beauty of this religion but they are specific to that person to that incident you don't extract a hukum from that and then create a business teaching Quran create a business teaching doing the work of da'wah and you give the dalil of this hadith Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said this la illa billah Please, as I told you, if I never see you again, and if you remember only one thing from me, then be my witness on the day of judgment. That this mad mullah who came and told us, do not take money for Quran. Do not take money for Dawa. Go and stand before my Rabb Jalla Jalaluhu and say, Ya Allah, this jahil. He said, do not take money to talk about your glory. passion for something now when you have passion the next step is expertise because passion without expertise means there is no passion if I tell you I'm passionate about flying so you ask me check do you have a pilot's license as a no sorry right. are you intending to join flying school and get a pilot's license I say, yeah maybe but you know not really then what will you tell me? You will say, Sheikh, you are passionate about seeing other people flying. Because if you are passionate about flying and you don't know how to fly, what is this passion? So if you are passionate about something, then you should be spending a lot of time reading about it, learning about it, and so on and so forth. Not because your organization pays you for it or not because there is some money coming from it, because of the love for the thing. Because of the love for the thing. Right? So if you are passionate about da'wah, my question is, do you stand up in tahajjud? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who changes the hearts. لا تهدي من أحببت ولكن الله يهدي من يشاء. Allah said, you cannot give hidayah to anybody. Allah will give hidayah to whoever he wants. If you say, I am a da'i, da if you say that I am in the work of da'wah, do you stand in the night? And do you cry before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the people that you meet? Because this was the amal of the Anbiya alayhi wasalam. All of them, including Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasalam. What is your connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Because you cannot give what you don't have. So what is your connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? If I am not connected with Allah, I cannot connect you. So how much effort are you spending on yourself? What is the state of your nafs? Have you done tazkiyah of your nafs? Have you done islah of your akhlaq? How will you do da'wah if your own nafs has not? And tazkiyah to nafs is not a stage that you reach and then you are home and dry. No, it is a constant struggle till the day you die. Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal rahmatullahi is passing away. Last moments of his life. He is in a state of naza, he, he loses consciousness, he gets consciousness. His son Muhammad says that my father when he got consciousness, he says not yet, not yet. So he said, I got worried, why is he saying not yet, what's happened to my father? I mean, in the last moments of his life, he is, you know, he's afraid of death or what is the situation? So when he came, got consciousness, again he said not yet. Muhammad bin Hanbal, he asked his father, he said, yeah, I mean, why are you saying not yet, what is this not yet? Imam Muhammad says, don't you see who is sitting here? He says, who is sitting here? I don't see anybody. He says, Iblis is sitting here and he is, Iblis is telling me, Ya Ahmad, you have escaped me. You have escaped me. And I am telling him, not yet, not yet, because my life is still there. Huh? Who is saying this? Imam Ahmad bin Hamman. There was a man in his time called Bishar al-Hafi. I'm talking about the importance of Tazkiyat al-Nafs. And Bishar al-Hafi was <coughs> a contemporary of Imam Ahmad. He was a great friend of Imam Ahmad. And Imam Ahmad used to call him my Sheikh. So people sometimes, some people gave an objection. They said, why do you call him your Sheikh? He's not an Alim. He's not an Alim. I mean, he's not definitely not an Alim like you. How many Alims does he know? Why do you call him, why do you call him your Sheikh? He said, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, 
inna wa yakhsha Allah min ibadihi al-ulama Allah said oh the ulama are only those who have khashyat of Allah when he said bishr al-hafi bishr has the hasil of ilm he has the essence of knowledge which is khashyatullah so i call him my sheikh what was imam ahmad bin hanbal rahmatullah his own standard of what is knowledge a man came and asked him he said to him ya imam how many ahadith should a person know memorize memory memorized how many ahadith and memorize memorize i am not saying quote hadith like i quote you know meaning of the hadith no memorization means he knows the the hadith he knows the uh, asbab un, asbab of the hadith he knows the uh, narration the narrators and so on and all the uh, ilm of asma ur rijal and so forth so the man asked him how many hadith should a man know before he can do istibadul ahkam before he can extract a ruling from a hadith imam muhammad rahmatullah ali keep silent don't say anything but the man is persistent so he asked him again imam muhammad silent so the man now decides to start with a number and think about look at the look at the general level of knowledge of those days huh? the man starts with a number guess get guess what number he says 10000 he said is it enough to know 10000 ahadith huh? he doesn't say is it enough to know 10 hadith 40 hadith 100 no 10000 ahadith what does it tell you about the general level of knowledge of people of the time it means that people they were people not one or two but lot of people knew 10000 and more so he is starting at a particular level imam muhammad says no not enough the man says 20 he says no he says 30 he says no he goes up all the way to 100000 ahadis and then he says 110 imam muhammad says no he said 120 imam muhammad said maybe huh 120000 ahadis The reason I'm telling you is that when somebody like that who has that standard and and it is reported that Imam Ahmad bin Hamal Rahmatullah knew more than 120,000 ahadith himself, so I'm saying somebody who has that level of his criterion of knowledge is that he is calling somebody like Bishr al Hafi his sheikh because of the nature of the heart. That's kiyatun nafs. So if you are serious about dawa. and this is not only related to people who are in the so called work of dawa that itself is, we we have we live in a crazy world i don't know we must seriously think what is it i am talking whose work is dawa of islam whose work is it whose work is the work of tabligh huh every muslim every muslim not this group or that group every single muslim is supposed to be a walking talking model of islam what is the dalil the sahaba ridwan allah alayhi wasallam what did they what did they used to tell people kunu mithlana become like us they did not say become like rasul allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam they said become like us because we are like the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam they didn't tell people to go and look at the life of rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam look at my life I'm not saying we should say that. I'm just saying that at least that is our standard. Can we say to a person, "Become like me"? The Sahaba said it. It was not a statement of arrogance. It was not a statement of you know they were not in a fantasy. That was their reality. You wanted to know who is a Muslim, you could look at any of the Sahaba, Rizwan Rai, Ali Majmain, and you would know who is a Muslim. You didn't need to go and search, search and hunt and say this person or that person. No, anybody. That is our standard. Expertise, passion, expertise. How do you get expertise? By becoming the best in the world. There's a wonderful book called Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell. Yeah, read the book. It's called Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell. Now he talks about expertise and he says that you cannot get expertise in any area. unless you spend 10000 hours doing that particular action hmm 10000 hours conscious practice conscious practice in the correct way 10000 hours 
Now, take this what Malcolm Gladwell says and relate it to the behavior of our Salaf. This is what I mean by integrated teaching. The ahadis and the stories of our Salaf are not simply to talk about them and cry a few tears and go home. We need to relate it to our real world. How do you take Malcolm Gladwell's book and his 10,000 hour rule and relate it to the behavior of our Salaf where we know you name, you name the Imam, you name the, 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 the Salaf of Salihin, people used to spend entire nights in, in uh, uh, praying Nawafil. 100 rakat, 200 rakat, people make many, many claims. Why? And I'm not talking about uh, Ramadan or something. That, that was their standard practice. Why? 10,000 hour rule. How do you get good at Salah? By praying. Not praying four rakat of Zohar and, and, and running away. No. Extra nawafil. What is the, what is the hadith of Qudsi with regard to this, to this issue? And Rabbi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says that my slave comes close to me by fulfilling the faraid, which is the boundary condition. And then he continues to come close to me through his nawafil until I become the hand by which he holds. How many nawafil do we pray? And then we say, there is, how can I get khushu in my salah? You cannot get khushu in your salah. How will you get khushu in your salah? Hassan al-Basri rahmatullah he stands for tahajjud. And he says, before he starts praying, he says, Ya Allah, the whole world is asleep. Even the stars have gone to sleep. He says, oh Allah, there are only two who are awake. You on your arsh and me here. See the, see the connection with Allah. That's why I tell people, talk to Allah. Do you talk to Allah? Why don't you talk to Allah? Ask yourself this question. Do you talk to Allah? And if you do not talk to Allah, why don't you talk to Allah? Who was Samuel Basir? He can see you, he can hear you real time. He knows languages. You can talk to him in any language because he created all the languages. Why do you not talk to Allah? I'm not talking about sajda and salah. And talk to Allah. Tell Allah your story. Yalla, I'm oh my God, Yalla, there, there's no parking. Yalla, please get me a parking. Huh? Yalla, I need this medicine now. Yalla, cure me without the medicine. Oh, my iman is weak. Get me a shop. Yeah, I got to catch this flight. I'm running out of time. Please, do something. You talk to Allah. Why don't you talk to Allah? Why do you not talk to Allah? Teach this to your children, man. Teach this to your children. So, Hassan al-Masih Rahmatullah is standing, he's talking to his Rabb. Ya Allah, only two are awake. You and me. You on your arch, me here. And then he says, Allah Akbar. <clears throat> then while he's praying, he hears some commotion, some sound in the house as if somebody has entered the house. He continues the salah. When he finishes the salah, there is a man standing there. And the man is telling, he's, he tells Hassan al-Basri, what kind of a man are you? So, Hassan al-Basri says, who are you? The man says, I'm a thief. I came to steal to take something from you. But you have nothing. There's nothing in your house worth taking. What kind of a man, like, a man are you? How can you live like this? I mean, the man is giving Hassan, Hassan Basri some bhajan. He said, how can you live like this? I have nothing. Hassan Basri said, no. I have, I'll give you. He said, what? He said, go make wudu and come. So the thief goes, makes wudu. He comes back. Hassan Basri said, stand here. Next to him. He says, Allah Akbar. So the thief also is praying next to Hassan al-Basri Rahmatullahi He listens to the Qirat of Hassan al-Basri, not the, not the lahan, not the tune. He listens to the one to whom the Qur'an is real. The Qur'an is real. When the Salah is finished, the man is weeping and crying. He said, Wallah, you gave me. He said, you gave me. He said, you gave me the greatest wealth that I have ever taken. He said, I make tawbah. On your hand, I make tawbah. I will stop this work I'm doing, this is haram. 
हाँ भाई अल्लाह वालों के पास जाओगे तो अल्लाह मिलेगा पर्सन कैन ओनली गिव यू वॉट यू हैव दैट्स वाई एम सेंग इंक्रीज योर वेल्थ एंड योर वेल्थ इज कनेक्शन विद अल्लाह सुबह So expertise is repeatability and that comes from conscious practice. And the third one is return. What is the return on this investment of yours? My brothers and sisters, see the line on the bottom. I said sacrifice is what the chicken does. Tandoori chicken. You like tandoori chicken? Everything else has a return. We use this word qurbani. दीन के लिए कुर्बानी कीजिए सैक्रिफाइस फॉर द रिलीजन माई सबमिशन टू इज देर इज नो सैक्रिफाइस इन रिलीजन देर इज इन्वेस्टमेंट वॉट इज द दलील अल्लाह सुबह से वमन जा आबिल हसन थी फल हो आशर अमसालिया वॉट परसेंटेज इज दैट टेन टाइम्स इज वॉट वन थाउजेंड परसेंट डबल इज हंड्रेड परसेंट टेन टाइम्स इज 1000% and that is the minimum that my rab can give among the ghair mumkinat among the things that are impossibilities are for example allah subhanahu wa ta'ala la yukhliful miyad allah does not back on his promises among them is also allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cannot be stingy allah gives in keeping with his majesty and grace allah says bring one good deed i will give you 10 times that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says the man makes the niya he hasn't even done the thing he makes the niya that i want to do a good deed allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the malaika write it down now the malaika they're not against insan or against human beings they are robots a robot is programmed to do something you ask it to do something else it will ask you a question should i do this should i not do that doesn't happen your computer said delete he said are you sure so they say ya rabbal alamin he did not do it yet because you have written the deed when it is done it is written he is only near allah says write it down as one hasana then the man goes out you make the near i am going to give one real in charity be it already written Make the niya now. Why not? Huh? Make the niya. When you go out of here, I'm going to give one, one real in charity, inshallah. Correct me. We do it. Then, when you actually give that one real, ten times that. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala orders them right now ten times. The man makes a niya to do something haram, to do something wrong. May Allah protect us from such niyat, but you know. The man like I say, what shall I do? So Allah says, no, he has not done it yet. Nothing. Different rule, huh? Good niya, write the deed. Bad niya, leave it. Now, you made the niya, then you decide. For example, you make the niya. I'm going to tell my brother about so and so. Then the thought comes, la hawla khotar. That's ghibat. I'm not going to do that. So you made the niya, nothing written. You change the niya. I will not do it. Allah says, write a good deed. nothing has actually happened only the niya you change the niya write a good deed the man does not change the niya he made the niya for haram he goes and does it malaika shall we write no no hold on wait he will make toba yalla but he did it no wait the whole day passes then at the end of the day Now you write how many? One. One. He did one. He did one. Yeah, but he did a good deed and you gave ten. Yeah, that's good deed. Different rule. For an evil deed, one is to one. This is my Rabb Jalla Jalla. Huh? And that's why Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala said, "Kaifa takfuruna billah? Kaifa takfuruna billah? How can you deny Allah?" 
كيف تكفرون بالله وكنتم امواتا فاحياكم ثم يميتكم ثم يحييكم ثم اليه ترجعون you are nothing you are nothing you are not on, not only nothing you are less than nothing هل اتى على الانسان حين من الدهر لم يكن شيئا مذكورا has man forgotten the fact that one day and there was a time when he was not even mentioned ah la karim be clear about your return for a sacrifice two conditions are required number one first condition of sacrifice is that you must own the thing that you sacrifice i cannot sacrifice this computer because i don't own this computer so the first condition of sacrifice is you must own that which you are sacrificing second condition of sacrifice is you will must not get any return for that amal then it's a sacrifice i gave up something and i got nothing in return i gave up what was mine and i got nothing in return that's why i'm saying the only sacrifice is tandoori chicken that chicken died for you and it got nothing in return everything else you spend your time in the work of dawa whose time is it <clears throat> who gave you the life if the time is yours then why does allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first question on the day of judgment what is the first question what did you do with the time i gave you what did you do with the life i gave you yeah like it was my time i did whatever i want can you say that is there an answer yeah like i spent it watching angry birds huh? <clears throat> Time belongs to Allah. Life belongs to Allah. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Your wealth belongs to Allah. Your knowledge belongs to Allah. Your ability to translate and transmit that knowledge belongs to Allah. Who put the desire to do something in your heart? Huh? Ajib Allah ki shaan hai. who can be so generous wallah who can be so? he puts the desire in your heart then he gives you everything then you may then he makes you do it then he rewards you hey achi baat hai if allah gave us nothing that would be justice it belongs to me your life belongs to me your irada belongs to me I gave you the the irada I gave you the desire that you should do something I gave you the ability to do it I gave you the money to give charity otherwise how would you have given charity now what reward do you want from me no reward this would be justice let me ask you a simple question <clears throat> a beggar comes to beg to your house you are a good person the beggar comes to beg in your house So you call your servant, and you give him ten reals. Say, go give it to the beggar. The servant goes and gives to the beggar. Do you reward the servant? Do you call the servant back and say, here is ten real for you because you took the ten real to the beggar? Do you do this? Yes or no? Does anyone in the whole world do this? My Rabb does this. Jala jala lo. His money. He is telling us to do it, and when we do it, he gives us a reward. That also how much? Minimum. One is to ten, minimum. How can you not love Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala? Jala jala. How is it possible that you are a Muslim and I'm a Muslim, and we do not love Allah? Remember, my brothers and sisters, if you want to work. whether it is islam or whether it is your profession forget the word sacrifice think the word investment never use the word sacrifice never use the word qurbani ever again think investment why because if you are in the sacrifice mode your sacrifice will always end 
there is no sacrifice and that can go on forever at some point that sacrifice will end because the amount you lose is more than what you got i want to give charity i have given everything all my wealth i even take out take off the clothes of my body and give away now what will i give it has to stop and it won't it won't nobody does it to that to that end it stops long before that but if you think investment does an investment stop no because investments have returns the more i invest the more i get the more i invest the more i get warren buffett one of the richest men in the world big investor he is now in his 80s has he stopped investing let's say it is enough no continuously forever and ever and ever this is the that's why allah subhanahu wa taala what, what did allah subhanahu wa taala call the work of the tijara ya ayyuhalladhina amanu hal adullukum ala tijaratin tunjikum min adhabin alim tijara trade business allah did not say shall i show you a sacrifice that will save you no allah said i'll show you a trade my rab does not need your sacrifice and my sacrifice allah said i'll show you a trade invest and that investment will save you from the jahannam return roi we talk about in in my business language return on investment return on investment <coughs> roi so ask yourself what is the return on your investment how does this relate to your professions same thing take joy in what you do learn more and more about it joy in the learning joy in doing more of it joy in doing it in different ways you have passion get expertise and the return is the joy you get the monetary return is something which you also get i always tell people it is impossible to fail in life unless you seriously want to fail people who fail take a lot of trouble to fail success is the natural situation the default condition is success you fail because you deliberately want to fail you don't do the things you are supposed to do and so on and of course you fail so take pleasure in that inshallah allah subhanahu wa taala gives great success i want to close with one final concept and then inshallah we happy to answer any questions and so on those of you who are uh, taking notes and taking photographs of the screen and so on and so forth i deliberately didn't tell you that in the beginning so they'll let you have your interest i am going to give you this entire presentation uh, the link to that most welcome please take it use it and make dua for me inshallah i want to say to my brothers and sisters there's a window of opportunity that opens in the life of every man and woman when we have a unique opportunity to make a difference to make an impact and to influence others and when this window closes our life is effectively over even if we remain alive my submission to you is your window and my window is open right now what do you want to do because to take advantage of the window of opportunity you need to be able to anticipate it and you need to be ready with whatever it takes to take advantage of that window of opportunity it's not an accident success is not an accident success is the natural result of intelligent effort because to live is not merely to breathe what do you call somebody who is on a ventilator who's brain dead he's dead or alive he's still breathing there are many of us who walk around as if we are on ventilators brain dead we walk and eat and talk and so on and so forth but we are brain dead do you look at the actions we have to re ignite when the battery is dead what do they do they take a jump starter a cord from another battery and they shock it do that to your system stand up tonight in tahajjud seriously my submission to you is please stand up tonight in tahajjud for two rakat and ask allah subhanahu wa taala ya allah change my life 
change my life so that I become successful in this world and the next. And give me success in keeping with your majesty and grace. Because then you have to get maximum success. You have to get maximum success. If you are asking somebody for charity, how much charity will you get? 10 real, 100 real, what not? But you go to the Amir of Qatar. And you come, if you go to him and you say, Sheikh, I need money, please help me. What will he give you? 10 real? It is beneath his dignity to give you 10 real. Yes or no? The Amir cannot give you 10 real. The Amir has to give something which reflects his wealth. This is not the Amir. This is Rabbul Alameen. Hey, Allah said, Allah said, Allah said, then you will never need to ask anybody else. Take from Allah. He is the only one who likes to give. He is the only one who likes those who ask. The people of this world who have money, who have wealth, have security around that wealth. They have different levels of security. Two levels, three levels, ten levels to protect that wealth. My Rabb Jalla Jalal, who is the only one whose treasures are open. Not only are they open, he actually appoints people there to say, give it away, give it away, give it away. Who are those people? The Anbiya alayhi salam. What did the Anbiya come to do? They came to give or take? Anbiya are appointed. The treasures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah created them. He said, take it. So if you are not getting from the treasures of Allah, is it? Whose responsibility is it? You can't say, Allah, you did not give me. No. <clears throat> so my brothers and sisters, stand up tonight. for two rakat of tahajjud. And ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, jalla jalalu. And ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that thing which you think is impossible. I'm sitting here in this masjid as Allah is my witness. Ask Allah that dua which you think is impossible. Think about that dua. What is completely impossible? I'm going to ask my Rabb. Because what is possible is no point in asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can do it yourself. Ask Allah that which you know that this is not possible. I can't do this. I simply don't have the resources. Ask Allah that. Shan ke mutabak mago bhai. Bashak bajak dasira man mago. Don't go to the king and ask for 10 real. That's, you are insulting the king by asking for 10 real. When you go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ask Allah what you know is not possible. Ya Allah, give me this. Now we connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jala jala. Because life is about making choices. <clears throat> we choose to be winners or we choose to be losers. We choose to be victims or we choose to be masters. Both the choices, whether you choose to be a victim or you choose to be a master, are subject to the same givens of society, but they have very different connotations. They have very different implications on your success, on your happiness. Who is a victim? Who is a master? Victims are people who complain. May Allah protect us. Illa mashallah. This is the state of the Ummah today. We are professional complainers. Constantly we complain about something or the other. So make a promise to yourself. From today you will not complain. Somebody says, how is the weather? You say, Alhamdulillah. Don't say, oh my God, it's so hot. No, 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 no. No hot, no cold. Alhamdulillah. Hmm? A friend of mine told me this wonderful story. He said he was in Abu Dhabi. And uh, he said he was... Uh, he had his Egyptian friend who was walking with him and this man had uh, his, uh, uh, his thobe which was, which got caught in his, uh, in his feet and he fell flat on his face. Slammed on the ground. And then he gets up and says, Alhamdulillah. So my friend says, what? I mean, you just fell down, flat on your face. What are you saying Alhamdulillah for? He said, because I fell flat on my face, I was able to get up, nothing broke, nothing happened. Alhamdulillah. 
Huh? Say, Alhamdulillah, no complaints. That is the sign of a master, that is the sign of a winner. Does not complain. And if you have to complain, tell Allah about it. Hassan al-Basir, Alhamdulillah, I make dua, Allah, should, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should decree that I should meet Hassan al-Basir, Alhamdulillah. What a wonderful man he was. He was a student, he was among the Tabayin and he was he's considered to be among the, the big people in the Tabayin. He was a student of Ali bin Abi Talib, Hassan al-Basir, Alhamdulillah, is walking and there are two people who are talking and he overhears the conversation. One man is complaining about something in his life to another man. So Hassan al-Basir, Alhamdulillah, stops there and he said, what a strange man you are. He's telling the complainer. He said, what a strange man you are. He said, you are complaining about Ar-Rahman to somebody who has no Rahman. Huh? Ajeeb, huh? He says, you are complaining about Ar-Rahman to someone who has no Rahman. Many times my, my friends and my, my brother and so on, my, my Allah bless him. Out of the goodness of his heart, he tells me, anything you need, tell me. Goodness of his heart, you know, he says, anything you need, tell me. <laughs> so I tell him, Zinda ki to iska ulta bola humne. My whole life I have said, anything you want, tell Allah. And if I want, if I have anything, I must tell you. <laughs> Allah kareem. Huh? I'm saying he's saying it out of the goodness of his heart. Even when I come here and people tell me, please, if you need, if you need anything, please let me know. Please call me. I said, no, no. I will call you when my Rabb does not hear anymore. Na'udhu Billah. I will call you if there is something that you can do which my Rabb cannot do. Jalla, jalla. Hey. Hassan al-Basri says, you are complaining about our Rahman to somebody who has no Rahman. Why? You know, we, we teach these things. I mean, I went to one of the best business schools in the, in the country, in India, to have Ahmedabad. So we teach ways of how do you get finance and how do you do this and do that and so on. And the basic principle is that you are teaching somebody how to get something from someone who does not want to give. Yes? So you need to teach a way. What is the way to get something from someone who wants to give? What is the way? Allah to dene ke liye bata hai bhai. Allah is there to give. Udhoni. Did Allah say what to ask? Did Allah say what to ask? Allah said ask me. Astajib lakum I will give you. Did Allah put a condition to say what to ask? So why do you put condition on yourself? Ask whatever you want. Because your Rabb has no boundaries. His treasures have no boundaries. His Khudrat has no boundaries. He feeds the whole world. And you think he cannot give you one loaf of bread? You have to worry about that? Hey. La ilaha illallah. So, make the choice. You want to be a victim or you want to be a master? If you want to be a master, own responsibility for yourself. Connect with your Rabb Jalla Jalalu. My brothers and sisters, we have only one life. There's no reincarnation. There's no coming back into this world. Let us live that life to the fullest. Imam Shafi Rahmatullah said, life is but an instant. Let it be an instant of obedience. He said, life is but an instant. Let that be an instant of obedience. And therefore, I come to the, almost the closing of this. 
He's still trying to keep it in the time because we're supposed to begin at 9.30 and finish at 11.30. So, you know, 11.15, we began late, but it doesn't matter, inshallah. Everything has a price. If I tell you, for example, that when I go back to India, I'm going to buy a car. What will you ask me? What question? Anybody? Bolo bhai, huh? Which car? Which car, right? Which car? So I'm telling you, Yashar, I told you I want to buy a car. Is there something called a car in the market? Or do you have a Toyota and you have a Hummer and you have a BMW and you have a Mercedes and you have a Bentley and you have a Rolls Royce and you have a Hyundai and you have... Is there something called car? There's no such thing called car. There are names for cars. So now, I have got 100,000 rupees in my pocket. Hmm? Divide that by 20 and you get your rough calculation of the Qatari real. So I've got 1 lakh 100,000 rupees in my pocket. And I go to the Rolls Royce showroom. And I say to the man, I've come to buy a Rolls. So, very good, Alhamdulillah. I have to appreciate your uh, aspirations. How much money do you have? The man says, 100,000. I say to him, 1 lakh rupees. So the man tells me, please come here. And he said, please sit down here. And then he puts a 3D image of a Rolls Royce on his laptop. And he says, you know, if you move your finger, you can turn it around and you can look under it and you can open the bonnet and you can see the engine and you can open the doors and you can see the upholstery and everything else and you can look at it from the front and the back and so on and so forth and that is what you get for 100,000 rupees you get to look at the picture of the Rolls Royce 3D model yes <laughs> everything has a price everything requires investment In Allah Hashtara, Min Al Mu'minina. What? How much? Huh? Hmm? Bolo, ayat kya hai? Anfusahum, wa amwalahum, bi anna lahum ul jannah. How much anfus? How much mal? Whole thing, whole thing. Jannah is not free. And Allah said, I have purchased. Deal is over. It's your time to deliver and take it. That's why in Surah al Mu'minun, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what did he call the Mu'minun? Humul warithun. Who is the warith? Who owns it? He is now taking charge of it. Your wealth after your death belongs to whom? To your burasa. So the waris, your children, your wife, whoever is there, it belongs to them. So after your death, they just take, do they pay somebody for it? No, it is mine. Who is Jannah? Jannah belongs to whom? To you. I am not sitting here giving Jannah to you. I am saying, this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. Who will worry soon? May I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among the worry soon of Jannah, inshallah. Jannatul Fidos. But we have to pay the price. And what is the price? This beautiful price is to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's it. Please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the price of Jannah. If Allah is pleased with us, we get Jannah. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Jalla Jalaluhu to be pleased with us. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Jalla Jalaluhu to make it easy for us to please Him. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Jalla Jalaluhu to be pleased with all of you and never to be displeased. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Jalla Jalaluhu to enable you to do that which is pleasing to Him, to make your lives in this dunya the most successful model of life, and then to make your life of your akhirah a model of success in the akhirah. Wa sallallahu ala nabi al-kareem wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in bi rahmatika ya rahman rahim.